What's up everybody, Brian Tong here, and in my hand, this is the new M5 for the 14 inch MacBook Pro. And if this looks very similar to what you've seen before, it's because it's pretty much darn exactly the same from weight to size to dimensions to ports. We'll talk all about that, but this does have the M5 chip on it, the base M5, right? The M5 Pro and the M5 Max chips. Those will be coming in future models down the road. We don't know when, but we are gonna focus on this because we are able to pull some more information and new insights from the M5 chip and what it's capable of. So let's first um, talk about the chip itself. That's probably the most important thing. So the M5 in here, yes, this is based on the third generation three nanometer process. And what that means is it's gonna be able to be more power efficient while also giving the CPU more power. And how does that translate? Well, if you talk about single core performance, uh, Apple says you're getting about a 10% boost in performance there. Multi-core performance, you're getting around a 15 to 20% boost. That's gonna be across the board. We do know when you talk about power efficiency, this is a 24 hour laptop and everything that I've been able to do and use and tasks, I've easily gotten it through the day. Obviously it helps that this is a 14 inch display as well, but from a power standpoint, yeah, this is gonna be fine to get you through things. Now, let's jump ahead really quick and talk about some of these benchmarks. We know that benchmarks don't mean anything, but I wanna establish a base level so you understand where it stands compared to the other models before it. So we're obviously running Geekbench 6, and these are the benchmark results. You're gonna see all, look at all these models that we have lined up from M1, all the way through M5, and then from the higher end standpoint, I did wanna show you the M1 Max, M4 Max, and the M2 Ultra. But look at where we stand here with the M5 14 inch MacBook Pro single core performance. Yes, Apple has touted this as having the fastest single core performance in the world. Now, when you at least compare it to Apple's lineup, 4,295 for a single core score, larger than any processor that's available for Apple to this date. And then if you go to multi-core score performance, that's gonna be a little different. We're getting 17,873 for the score, but if you look at that, where that stands, that falls somewhere just for the M5, somewhere in between the M1 Max and the M4 Max when it comes to multi-core score performance. So this thing is obviously a beast. All right, let's talk GPU performance with these benchmarks. And if we look again at this comparison, let's just focus on M1 to M5 here. Yes, the M1 started at 22,694. That is a model from 2020. Now we're in the year 2025. And if you look at the M5 with the 14 inch MacBook Pro that we have here, 77,236. So that more than triples the GPU performance. And one of the new features about this is that this is truly a next generation GPU. It has new shader cores. It's also improved for better graphics performance, a completely new third generation ray tracing engine. So that's when you're talking about reflections and how light hits things and how it's diffused. That's gonna be a significant improvement here with the M5 chip. And a re-architected second generation dynamic caching. So all this means is more realistic lighting and reflections in game with smoother gameplay across the board, gaming is gonna get better. But here's the funny thing, we actually stacked up my M1 Max versus the new M5 14 inch MacBook Pro. And you can always look at numbers, but you know what? The eye test is always the best test. And I will say that yes, the M5, there were areas where it did look sharper, maybe a little more intensity in certain spots, but overall, the M1 Max did pretty good. I'm not saying that it's, if you're really into gaming, typically you want the best performing uh, you know, machine, but there wasn't this huge gap between the M5 and the M1 Max that I own when it came to gaming performance, even if we're talking about frame rates. The big thing here though is that each core in the M5 now has its own individual neural accelerator. And what that means is that Apple will translate and says, oh, you know, this allows it to handle AI tasks four times as fast. Now, some of you might be rolling your eyes a little bit like, how much do I really use? This could come in handy anywhere from writing tools to image generation, but we decided to really put this to the test and see the benefits of the new chip. Now, the first example that we used is here in Adobe Premiere Pro, you have this ability to highlight all of your speech tracks and there's an option to enhance speech and it's really nice. So the results we found from doing this from the M1 Max versus the new M5 chip is that the M1 Max was able to render out this enhanced speech at three minutes and 13 seconds. 
If you wanna talk about the M5 chip on the 14 inch MacBook Pro, it did that same task in two minutes and 34 seconds. So again, a machine that is what, five years older and not even at its highest level spec, the M5 was able to outperform the M1 Max in this situation. Now here's another test I thought was really great, Topaz video, okay? So what I did is I took a video, geez, I can't remember how long ago, this has to be at least 15 years ago, of my niece, she was a flower girl. Now this video itself, resolution was 320 by 240, 15 frames per second. So we pop it in a Topaz video, which is known for basically helping you increase the resolution, increase the frame rate, and it is using AI and taking advantage of the neural accelerators here in this new M5 chip. So what we found is during this conversion, we made it a 4K, 60 frames per second video clip with ProRes video. That's what we wanted to convert it to. So this is what we got. Now for the M1 Max, it converted this video in four minutes and 46 seconds. If we're talking about now the M5 14 inch MacBook Pro, the same clip doing the same exact things, this exported at one minute and 21 seconds. The clip itself, I mean, it looks like, yes, it is still a video from 15 years ago, but significantly improved. I think the frame rate was really the most impressive thing. It interpolates that. It adds those to fill the gaps from 15 frames per second to 60 frames per second. So that was really impressive. And just the time it took on the new M5. Again, base model M5, that's what really impressed me the most. So if we're talking neural engine, it also has a nearly 30% increase in unified memory bandwidth. So you could feed this beast at 153 gigabytes per second. And then if you're also talking about another element of speed, the solid state drives in the new iPad Pro and this new M5 MacBook Pro have speeds twice as fast as before for read and write. So that also helps if you're loading in new LLMs for all those neural tasks as well. So with this machine, Everything is legitimately the same, but it's the heart of it, the M5 that has been significantly improved. This is the same size, right? I talk about the display, 14.2 inches, still a liquid retina XDR display, mini LED backlit, close to those deep blacks from an OLED display, but not quite there, all right? If you even look at the ports here, you still have MagSafe 3, you have USB-C Thunderbolt 4, it did not bump up to Thunderbolt 5, you have a 3.5 millimeter jack, Again, the ports, their location, the arrangement, and the type of ports, the SD XE card for media, another USB-C port, and then here, the uh, that is an HDMI out. Sorry, I had to look at that. But this is essentially the same exact machine. The colors, silver and space black, those are also the same as before. It's all about the M5. All right, let's now talk about some real world use cases. Yes, I edit video, and yes, this may not apply to you, but I think this gives you a good idea of how it performs with an actual task like the video that you're seeing. So we're gonna jump over to my Adobe Premiere 25.5 version video export. This is gonna be for a 13 minute video. This has roughly eight to 10 tracks of video and audio on it. So let's look at the M1 Mac Mini from 2020. It took 10 minutes and 38 seconds to export this video. Now, as you go along, it gets less and less. We jump up now to the M5 14 inch MacBook Pro. That is a five minute and 44 second export for a 13 minute video. That is really impressive, but here's what's also crazy and impressive. But let's look right next to it. The M1 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro from 2021 that exported this video in four minutes and 27 seconds. So you're starting to see the M5 just on Adobe Premiere getting very close into its performance. Next up, we're gonna now show an export of a longer video, a 45 minute video, which had about 20 audio and video tracks, but think of like a larger production, maybe a longer format podcast. We look at the M1 Mac Mini 2020, that export time was one hour, 44 minutes and 23 seconds. We keep on getting faster times, but with the new M5 14 inch MacBook Pro, that time is at 35 minutes and 52 seconds, a huge leap. And then if we look at my M1 Max, that's gonna be 23 minutes and 29 seconds. You wanna go at the very top, an M2 Ultra Studio, that exported at eight minutes and 51 seconds. That's just stupid. Okay, but now let's talk even more stupid. Let's use software that's optimized with the hardware. So we're gonna talk about our Final Cut Pro exports. So here for the latest version of Final Cut Pro 11.1.1, .1 .1, 
M1 Mac Mini, 4 minutes and 40 seconds. M5 MacBook Pro, 54 seconds. M1 Max MacBook Pro, 55 seconds. So specifically with this case, <laughs> the M5 chip here essentially is on par with a fully specced out M1 Max from 2021. That's where we're getting at with the speed and the power efficiency. Now, what also makes me happy is it just shows you how incredible the M1 Max and Apple Silicon has been all this time. And this is why in a lot of my videos I've said, sometime Apple might have made Apple Silicon too good because of look at the performance. I mean, the numbers don't lie. And then it's always fun to get crazy. The M2 Ultra Max Studio, 37 seconds. I do want to tell you one thing really quickly to rewind because some of you that are looking at this machine are on actual Intel machines still because they still run fine. I can tell you that that 13 minute video that I referenced earlier, it took about 35 to 40 minutes to export that on an Intel machine. Now we're talking about something like an M5 does in around five minutes. So I think if you're on an Intel machine, it might be feeling long in the tooth. It's loud, it's noisy. I think out of anyone who is prime to upgrade to an M5 machine, you are the people specifically that I'm imploring you to. It's now time to make the jump. Pricing here stays the same, $1,599 for the base model 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M5 chip. Now you can customize it if you want the nano texture display, if you want more storage capacity or more memory, you can play with those things, but the base model price stays exactly the same. So I basically told you all who this is for, right? If you're an Intel owner, I think it's a really compelling time. I also think though M1 owners with that entry level models with that eight gigs of memory when it first came out, you're probably feeling your computer chug a little bit. You, you're probably a good candidate for these, but otherwise, if your machine works and is you're happy with it, stay happy. There's no need to spend more money. And if you have an M4 and you're looking to get an M5, you've got, you got way too much money. But overall, we really wanted to show you quickly from a benchmark standpoint, from a real world test standpoint, and then some specific applications like Topaz video and enhancing audio. These are the ways that you can take advantage of that extra speed if you need that speed and if you don't, enjoy your life. All right, everybody, that's gonna do it for the review of the M5 14 inch MacBook Pro. No major significant upgrades, mostly incremental, but this thing is still a beast.